What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with another one. So I just watched the interview Eddie Hearn did with IFL TV. Shout out to IFL TV for doing a great job out there, man. So I just seen the interview uh, Eddie Hearn, the latest interview Eddie Hearn just did with IFL TV. And um, he talked about the situation between Dillian White and... Um, uh, Deontay Wilder with the WBC um, removing Dillian White and replacing Dillian White with undefeated uh, lineal, British lineal heavyweight champ Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, right? Uh, so they, re uh, they removed Dillian White because they still haven't got a resolution with the uh, B sample and the failed UCOD test, allegedly, you know, um, heading into you know, the Oscar Rivas fight, which was supposed to be for WBC eliminated, right? Uh, we saw uh, um, Dillian White uh, defeat Oscar Rivas, but he had to get off the canvas to do so, right? Uh, Dillian White has been pushing for this so-called Deontay Wilder fight and man WBC mandatory spot for quite some time, right? Dillian White turned down opportunities to face Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder directly told Dillian White. And guess what? You, as many people as they want can say, well, Deontay Wilder's no matchmaker. Who is Deontay Wilder to say that Dillian White needs to fight this person or that person? Well, Floyd Mayweather did it. Nobody complained. Right? Uh, uh, the greats of the past did it. And nobody complained. Joe Lewis told Muhammad Ali if he get past, uh, I believe it was Smelling, then he was going to beat him. Right? So it's not the first time somebody said, you know, uh, uh, fight uh, uh, fighter a, a, uh, X, Y, and Z, and then I'll give you the opportunity. So Deontay Wilder said, you fight Luis Ortiz, you defeat Luis Ortiz, and I, I guarantee you I'll fight you immediately after. He was a man of his word. And how we know he was a man of his word is because he fighting Luis Ortiz in a rematch for a second time. So this could have easily been... Dillian White. If Dillian White have defeated Fort Ortiz and defeated Ortiz and pushed for it, because guess what? Dillian White uh, is on a fight by fight basis with Matchroom top uh, Matchroom CEO and promoter Eddie Hearn and Matchroom in the zone. Uh, he doesn't even always fight on the zone. If it depends on if the zone feel like picking up the option for Dillian White fight, so he don't even fight uh, on the zone every um um every fight, right? So with that said, you know, Dillian White could have fought Luis Ortiz and got the Wilder fight. He chose not to go in that direction. Okay, Dillian White was also shopping himself around um, as a free agent because he wasn't happy with the way things were going between himself, Eddie Hearn, uh, and, and Matchroom, and DeZone, and, and all things involved, right? Dillian White wasn't happy with it. Dillian White was shopping himself. He made it very public that he went to... Uh, um, to talk to Al Heyman and the PBC. Uh, he talked to Top Rank um, and uh, ESPN with Bob Arum. And um, he was shopping his services around, weighing out his options, right? And so then Dillian White decided that the best thing for Dillian White was to go back with Eddie Hearn, Matchroom, and DeZone. Cool. Who could blame him, right? Uh, with that said, Again, Deontay Wilder said, if you sign with um, Al Heyman and the PBC, that's a direct pipeline to fight me and we'll get it on. Right? All you got to do is fight one fight on PBC, sign two fight deal, sign a one fight deal, and I'll fight you on the PBC because I don't want to do business with uh, Eddie Hearn. Dillian White opted not to do that. And so now the WBC, yes, like Eddie Hearn said, and I agree with Eddie Hearn to a de uh, degree, to an extent, when he says that the WBC are being hypocrites in their approach to, you know, um, suspending Dillian White when he hasn't been suspended by any other parties, um, but not suspending uh, the, the three Mexican fighters that just recently, two or three that just recently, you know, um, popped, you know, dirty, allegedly for PEDs, and they're blaming it on the meat in Mexico, and they're giving them a pass, saying that for Clembutal once again, and then continuing to give them a pass. So Eddie Hearn is saying, well, these guys are, are failing the test, and you're giving them a pass in your ranking system. Dillian White 
uh, uh, hasn't been suspended by anybody, but yet you're jumping to suspend him. Now, I agree with that. They shouldn't suspend Dylan White if you're not going to suspend everybody. But we understand that uh, um, the WBC is going to have biases towards uh, um, a certain group of, of fans, a certain group of fighters, right? It is what it is. With that said, so I agree with, Dillian, with Eddie Hearn when he says that. Now, when he says that, you know, uh, Dillian White or Deontay Wilder is going to be franchised in order to avoid fighting Dillian White. In 2021, he says that they're going to franchise Deontay Wilder uh, in order for Deontay Wilder not for not him not to face Dillian White. Well, we just recently heard Deontay Wilder come out and say that he has zero interest. And we know he's been a man of his word since when he has he. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, said something and opted to go into a different direction. He hasn't done that, right? Uh, his history shows that if he says that he's going to do something or not do something, that's what he's going to stand on, right? And so he's, he stands on his square. And so with that said, you know, um, he said that he has no interest in accepting or participate in any franchise titles. So why would we believe anything other than because he didn't show us anything other than in in his entire career? Right. He's never shown us that, you know, uh, uh, he says one thing and does another thing. Never. He's been a man of his word and stood on his square thus far. Right. And it's just not his. It just just doesn't come across as his character. We understand this. Right. Uh, so now, like I stated, Dylan White had ample opportunity and, and situations to put himself in position to face, face Deontay Wilder. Like I said, Deontay Wilder was a man of his word. He stated that he would fight uh, um, uh, um, Dillian White should Dillian White face off against Ortiz. And how we know he's a man of his word, again, I'll explain this. He said if he fight Ortiz then, and beats Ortiz, then he'll go and fight Dillian White, guaranteed, hands down. Doesn't matter what was on the table. Doesn't matter undisputed. Didn't matter if uh, 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 mandatories. He would force the fight between himself and Dillian White. He would push for that fight. He wouldn't let nothing stand in the way if Dillian White uh, um, uh, um, obeyed by that. How we know this? Ortiz is fighting Deontay Wilder right now in a rematch November 23rd. So this could have easily been Dillian White, right? Um, Dillian White B sample has yet to come and surface. So, uh, like I said, I understand what Eddie Hearn is saying about you know the WBC being uh, um, hypo hypocrit hypocrites, you know, to the situation because they're just recently fighters that failed and they didn't suspend them, but they suspended Dillian White. Uh, the B the truth is, regardless of what what the WBC chooses to do or chooses not to do the b sample still hasn't come to the surface we still hasn't got we still haven't gotten any resolution to the b sample situation so you can't don't, don't try to you know uh, two wrongs don't make it right just because the wbc choosing not to suspend these these guys or remove these guys don't make it right with the situation with the b sample with dillian white because before these guys even tested uh and, and tested um allegedly tested positive for this, uh, uh, these banned clenbuterol uh, um, substances, we still haven't gotten the B sample from Dillian White two weeks ago. These, gen these gentlemen just recently tested positive for clenbuterol this week. What happened about two weeks ago when Dillian White and I'm not even going back to the entire history because we know we should we should have gotten a sample and a, a resolution to the situation. The, this took place July 17th. July 17th. OK, this is when this took place. Today is. November 8th. And we still haven't gotten a resolution. July 17th. November 8th. We still haven't gotten any word or resolution. That's fishy. Right? So let's get to the fight itself. I want to see this fight. I want to push for this fight. We need to push for this fight. Uh, he said that there's a possibility Dillian White could fight December 23rd, I believe. On the undercard of Danny Jacobs versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? 
De Deontay Wilder is going to fight Luis Ortiz November 23rd. And then he has two other bigger fish to fry before he gets to Dillian White. Uh, he's either going to go the route of fight Andy Ruiz Jr. for undisputed. Should Andy Ruiz Jr. be victorious against Anthony Joshua? Because if Anthony Joshua wins the fight, he's not going to fight Deontay Wilder. We already know this. We already know this. So if Andy Ruiz wins, then Wilder's going to go the route of fighting Andy Ruiz, pushing for that fight for undisputed, and push Tyson Fury to the sides. Point blank and period. You got to sit on the sideline. We go, we'll sub you in when we get ready. We'll sub you in when we get ready. Just like you put Wilder on the sideline and and, and, and you fought uh, um, uh, um, Otto Valine and you fought uh, um, Tom Schwartz and Sanja Dale and left Wilder to the side. And, and Wilder put Tyson Fury to the sideline, sub him out, bring Andrew Weeze in. And once he gets rid of Andrew Weeze, then you bring Tyson Fury back in the game and close the show. So, if Andrew Weeze is available and wins the fight against Anthony Joshua December 7th in Saudi Arabia, then Wilder goes the, the route of fighting Andrew Weeze. If Andrew Weeze has to satisfy his mandatory, Wilder's going to go the route of fighting Tyson Fury uh, February 22nd. So, after February 22nd, right, should Andrew Weeze fight win and, and that fight come to fruition with Wilder and Ruiz, then we know uh, uh, that date that most likely the... the um, Wilder and Ortiz are fighting in March. And then we know if he beats Ruiz for Undisputed, then he's probably no, most likely uh, uh, going to go the route of uh, September, October time with Tyson Fury. Right? So Wilder will fight in March, April, around that time against Andrew Ruiz for Undisputed. They might even push that fight to Cinco de Mayo for Undisputed. It might, might not see it to May 5th. And then, like I said, you'll see Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder in the fall. Right. Maybe uh, if it's Cinco de Mayo, maybe Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight in September. And then, you know, maybe if they fight in September and then Wilder uh, defeats Tyson Fury in September, he may push them for the w Dylan White fight in December. But all chips have to fall in this place. You understand what I'm telling you? All, all the pieces have to fall correctly for this to take place. Because if Andrew, like I said, now. It's going to give him the situation where he could fight Dylan White earlier if Andrew Ruiz has to satisfy a mandatory. That means Deontay Wilder will go ahead and fight Tyson Fury in February. Now, if this if if they're smart, if Andrew Ruiz satisfies his mandatory, then he looks to fight Deontay Wilder uh, 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 um, for undisputed. They definitely should do that in September, Mexican Independence Day weekend. Capitalize on the most revenue possible. Right. Andrew Ruiz is the first Mexican heavyweight in the history of the sport of boxing to be a champion. So to capitalize on that, you push that fight to uh, uh, September. So if he fights Fury in February, uh, uh, you push that fight to September. That means uh, you got March, April, May. Right. Or June. Wilder could come back and that could be Dillian White. You fight Dillian White in May. Because then you got, well, you got February, February, March, April, and May. So you could fight Dylan White in May. Should it get past Tyson Fury. And then you go ahead, and in September, you could fight him June, early June, late May, early June. That would give you enough time from the Fury fight to fight White, right? And then he'll go fight Andrew Ruiz in September for Undisputed. Because you need to fight Andrew Ruiz either Cinco de Mayo weekend or Mexican Independence Day weekend in September or May. That's when that fight needs to happen to capitalize on the revenue or Juneteenth. So I think that Dillian White and Deontay Wilder should fight Juneteenth. Juneteenth in Georgia. And let's, and let's close the chapter on this Dillian White situation. Because styles make fights. And Dillian White's style is all suited and all wrong for Deontay Wilder. And I'm talking about in reverse. I'm not saying it's a bad situation for Wilder. It's bad for White. White's style is tailor-made for Deontay Wilder. He does not move his head and he fatigues and he's short. It's going to look a lot like the, the, the um, Bermain Severn fights. Short fighters that fatigue and have uh, uh, and don't have uh, foot movement with Deontay Wilder 
is gonna both the, is gonna prove to be a disaster for that fighter, and that's what's gonna happen with Dillian White. And so now I want to push for Deontay Wilder to take that fight. Like I said, if the chips fall the way I just explained it to you, if if, if uh, Andrew Weiss has to satisfy a mandatory, then Deontay Wilder gets Fury out the way in February 22nd, then you can fight Dillian White in May, late May, early June, and then you fight Andrew Weiss because, like I said, uh, uh, Andrew Weiss needs to be on, on one of the Mexican holidays. It needs to be Cinco de Mayo, Mexican Independence Day weekend, September or May. So uh, uh, don't take it in May. Take it in September. Then you can get three fights in. Like Deontay Wilder said, he wants to get three fights in in 2020. So go ahead and fight Fury. Get Fury out the way. Now you go ahead, you fight Dillian White uh, uh, either June, early June or late May. Get him out the way. And that's a bad matchup. He's going to spark Dillian White and get it over with. Let's close the chapter on that. Point blank and period. I'm tired of talking about Dillian White and Wilder Duck and Dillian White and, and so on and so forth. Let's get it over with. Uh, uh, anybody that believes Deontay Wilder's Duck and Dillian White is as far removed mentally from the sport of boxing as they possibly could be. Meaning that they have no real knowledge of the sport of boxing. There's no way he's going into a fight with Luis Ortiz who Dillian White refused to fight. Or a fight with Fury. Or a fight with Ruiz. But he's ducking Dillian White. You don't believe that. But uh, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue Bud Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Bud Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L D. B, C, shout out to New Media, shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. We need to get Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder, in the ring with Dillian White next uh, uh, June or May. The end of May or early June in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Or in Georgia, uh, Juneteenth. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.